Hello, you're listening to Good Nightmare, a podcast where anything is possible. Today's episode is a bonus from our good friend Keith Linda. You may remember Keith from a previous bonus episode I released called The Bothell Hell House. Keith has generously submitted another story, and it's one I absolutely think you'll enjoy. Before I roll the clip, Keith has a documentary out that you can watch and also has a published book. I personally have bought a copy and I highly recommend checking them out. So I will leave the links to those in the description. I'm going to let Keith take it from here. So I will see you guys on the next episode. Don't forget to rate, subscribe and review if you have a chance. It is always greatly appreciated. Thank you so much for listening. And good luck not having nightmares. The Disappearing Cross by Keith Linder. This story I'm about to tell comes from the book The Bothell Hell House by Keith Linder. Currently on Amazon, available in Kindle and paperback formats. I always remember the events of this day because it was the weekend that Captain America the Winter Soldier movie was coming out in the United States. This story took place April of 2014. A month before the movie came out, my cousin flew from Texas and stayed with me and my girlfriend uh, for about a week or so. When she came, she brought a gift. It was a cross. Uh, my cousin had known prior to coming that me and Tina had been experiencing a lot of paranormal activity. Um, I told her before she came what was happening in the house, and she decided to come anyway. Some of the things that were happening before she arrived include two Bibles catching fire, an armoire being thrown across the hallway, objects being thrown off the bookshelves in the hallway, furniture being overturned in the living room and den area, and a poster catching fire in my office. My cousin is very spiritual like myself. She's also very religious. So she came, and when she came, she brought a gift. It was a cross Uh, that she had bought at the Bible Christian bookstore in Dallas, Texas. Luckily for her and us, while she was here, there was not a lot of activity. So she was able to stay a week and then safely return back to Dallas. However, the cross that she gave us, me and Tina decided to put it in our bedroom. It was the advice of my cousin that we keep the cross near our bed as a means of protection. This cross, I would say it's about eight to nine inches long and maybe four to five inches wide. It's a fairly sizable, noticeable uh, wooden or half wooden, half metal cross. Me and Tina put the cross in our bedroom above one of Tina's credenzas and it stayed there. A week or so later, it was a Sunday, I believe, me and Tina woke up and the cross was missing. Now, objects in our home always turn up missing. Certain objects like Bibles, candles, cameras, and Tina's jewelry. Most of these items never return. Some are always found in other parts of the house. This cross we knew was missing because as soon as we woke up, it's sort of hard to not see it. It's staring you right in the face as soon as you get out of bed. But it's now gone, and it was taken on a Sunday. Fast forward a week later to that following Saturday, the Saturday that I was to go to the movies to watch Captain America, the Winter Soldier with my friend. 
I was doing laundry that morning and while I was waiting for my laundry to finish washing, I decided to sit in my office and work on my computer. I was checking email, Tina was running errands upstairs and downstairs, and my clothes was in the washing machine. Nothing unusual about doing laundry on a Saturday morning. Something very peculiar and interesting started happening though. I found myself constantly waiting for my clothes to stop washing. It seemed for reasons I couldn't explain then that the washing machine was taking extra long or was washing my clothes longer than usual. About 20 minutes into my clothes washing, I would glance up from my computer desk and look toward the direction of the washing machine and ask myself, why isn't my laundry not done yet? I need to transfer my clothes to the dryer. After all, I'm to be meeting a friend in a few hours to go see one of our favorite movies. 30 minutes into the clothes washing or the washing cycle, I started hearing an unusual noise, a noise that I never heard before. My clothes had been washing for quite some time and it was kind of weird that all of a sudden I'm hearing banging noises coming from within the washing machine. But I thought nothing of it and continued doing what I was doing at my computer desk. 45 minutes later, I hear again the sound of banging coming from my washing machine. I look toward my washing machine and I'm thinking, shouldn't you be done already? Shouldn't my clothes be finished? About an hour later, the washing machine finally stopped. I got up from my desk and went to the washing machine and opened up the washer door and started removing clothing, immediately putting them into the dryer. It didn't take long to realize that there was something in the washing machine other than my clothing. I reached in and I pulled out some wet clothing and in addition, pulled out what felt to be wooden and metal objects. What I had in my hand were two pieces of the cross that my cousin had given me. It seemed the cross through the course of the washing cycle had separated and was now broken in two. Now, the interesting thing about this story and about this cross is the cross was not in the wash machine when I put the clothes in because as you notice from my story and we've all washed clothing, foreign objects like a shoe or a large object begin making noise right away. The cross or the noise that I heard while I was in my office happened 15, 20 minutes later. And that to me suggests that the cross through some way or how was inserted into the washing machine while the washing machine was running. I did not put a load of clothes into my washing machine There was no object in there before, and there was no object mixed in with my laundry. That noise that I heard began sometime in the distance of my washing cycle. Therefore, I'm forced to believe that the spirits who took the cross off the wall knew what they were doing when they inserted the cross into the washing machine while the washing machine was running. 
that's only one story out of many about how objects have moved, levitated, floated, disappeared, and even went through walls inside the Bothell home. That's only one story out of many out of the Bothell Hell House book by Keith Linder. Mm-hmm.